The Linac Coherent Light Source 2, or LCLS2, once fully operational, will be able to generate one of the most powerful X-ray beams in the world. Generating this much energy will also mean lots of heat. This heat poses a challenge since a portion of LCLS2 will need to have superconducting capabilities. To keep the accelerator cold enough to be a superconductor, the cryogenics team here at SLAC has assembled a cryoplant capable of cooling helium to 2 kelvins, or roughly 271 degrees Celsius, below freezing. This helium, once in its liquid state, will be pumped into the accelerator modules, keeping LCLS2 cold enough to generate its powerful X-rays. But why choose helium as a coolant in the first place? Helium is the only fluid that could be a liquid or gas at this level of temperature. There is no other fluid that would help us to, uh, to reach 2 or 4 Kelvin. Selecting helium as the coolant is the easy part. The real trouble is cooling the helium from room temperature to 2 kelvins. To begin the process, roughly 4 metric tons of helium are transported to slack and deposited into several outdoor storage tanks. After delivery, the helium is purified, pressurized, and cooled using a highly complex process that involves cooling water, liquid nitrogen, turbo expanders, and decompression. After these steps, the helium is cooled to roughly 4.5 kelvins, or about 269 degrees Celsius below freezing. The helium is now in its liquid state, and it travels through pipes into LCLS2's cryo modules, but it's not quite cold enough yet. To reach 2 kelvins, there's one final step. So the helium that's being produced by the cryo plant goes down to 4.5 kelvin, it's being transferred to the LINAC, where it's going to expand. We expand down to a pressure of 30 millibar, and once we reach this 30 millibar, the helium temperature drops to 2 kelvin. The 30 millibar is being achieved using a train of 5 cold compressors. After the helium goes through this process, it's recycled back into the system to be used again. This way, there's little to no wasted helium, allowing the cryoplant to continue running for extended durations of time. Now that the plant itself is assembled and functional, the process of cooling helium seems deceptively simple. The cryo plant here is fairly automated. There is a large number of, of operations that are completely automated. This includes uh, most of the startup, uh, most of the operation phase, and also the shutdown. This is being done to limit the amount of resources required to, uh, to operate uh, the plant that is now running 30, 60, 365 days a year and 24-7. Even with a robust team of engineers and operators backing the system, the road ahead will not be without its challenges. The challenge is so, as of today, uh, the LINAC is operating at 2 Kelvin, and we have very limited uh, heat load generated by the LINAC. As we move forward, and uh, as we're going to uh, increase as a load uh, provided by the cavity and by the LINAC, we will need to provide more cooling power to the system. And uh, the challenge for us would be to make sure that the capacity of the cryo plant is matching the requirement from the LINAC, that is the total heat load that is going to be generated by the cavities and the cryo modules when they are turned on to their full gradient. The LCLS2 accelerator is expected to produce its first X-ray beams in early 2023. For those first experiments, only one of two cryo plants will be used. The second plant, housed in the same building, is in the process of being assembled and will be used for upgrading LCLS2's capabilities when the time comes.